You can see the previous winners strafing my man Wick Goat out there watching. Hey, let's kick it off. We're gonna have a brand new champion here for the Vikings. And it will be Phenom starting with it first at the 24 yard line as he sets up his audibles. We've seen some great Madden over the last 32 clubs. What a road, what a journey it's been. And here we go. I formation has started out here for Phenom. Very effective with that Dante Hall. And he'll hand it off. And he'll work his way to the 28. I like right there Phenom going to the run because we did see Strafen have some success with Clinton Portis. He just got himself in a situation where he couldn't run too often. So it's good to see him right now testing Blair's run defense early. 61, matchbox lights. That'll bring up a second and six. That's at 94, Dante Hall. And he'll go to him again. And he's close to the marker at the 33. He's going to break up a third and one. Remember, Dante Hall played running back at Texas A&M. He was drafted by the Chiefs as a running back. Ward number 20, but they quickly found out, and this guy is a return machine. Yeah, no my, Devin Hester, but he's pretty good. My guy Phenom is rocking that Triple H offense where he has Harrison Hill and Hall looking to pedigree Blair right here. And he'll hand it off to Tyreek. He'll tote it out to the 41, quick gain of eight. And if I'm Phenom, I noticed that Blair came out on 3-4 Bear right there, and it looked like he had absolutely no chance at stopping that near formation. Something to look for in that fullback dive later on in the game. Atkins will come across the formation here on first and 10. Dante again. Oh, and Hall is off to the races. They will catch him. Phenom strikes first. And I'm hearing Phenom. He said, I can tote too. And I love it. I think that's a great change of pace in his offense. We saw Blair just staying in that nickel normal all game against Strafen with a lot of success. Phenom says, try and do that against this heavy package, and no dice right there for Blair. Good adjustment right there for Phenom coming into this game. He was definitely paying attention to that last one while he was scouting Blair. Four plays, 76 yards, and here it is, Mo. And it's always good when you're a passer if you can get a free one. You know, he doesn't spend any cap on his running back. He's able to sneak a wide receiver back there, and you can't catch him. Appreciate you guys tuning in all day long. We're in the the old bunch tight end formation with RG Serious Mo. Scott Cole with you. And we appreciate you guys giving us your time wherever you might be. Thanks for making us a part of your evening. And now we got a 7 0 ball game as Blair will get it for the first time with 321 remaining here in the first. And one thing I'm worried about for Phenom, I took a look at his defense. These key defensive players are the best Lawrence Taylor and the best Denzel Ward and Marlon Humphrey. So those cornerbacks aren't going to be making a difference on the run. His only hope is that Lawrence Taylor trying to stop the running back in the backfield. If he gets to the second level, I'd watch out. Don't forget, it though, he's got that Troy Palomalu out there with that secure tackler and unfakeable. That's going to be the key, in my opinion, to him slowing down this Barry Sanders. And he'll go to Barry. Barry breaks the tackle. One man to beat, and he can't get by him. That was the 10 capper, Brandon Wilson, holding on. And that's what I'm talking about with uh, Blair. His, his run stick just isn't quite there. You know, if he had that ph phenomenal run stick that we've seen from players like Drini, he would have made that a touchdown almost every single time. He's one-on-one -on -one with, with a slow Brandon Wilson who can't tackle. You've got to get out of there right there. I take it back. That's the team of the week, Brandon Wilson. He'll cost you 22 cap at a 77 overall. Interestingly enough, too, Phenom has the second worst run defense statistically out of everybody in this club. The person that had the worst run defense was none other than his opponent, Blair, and we saw how that worked out for him on the first drive. Here's the shot. Whoa, He'll throw man, off his back on, foot, man. and that will sail. And you hear Phenom saying, come on, man. You know why? Because if that's a good throw, that's intercepted every single time by Troy Palomalu. That's going to bring up at third and 11 at the 46-yard line. 
Pollard will go out wide to the right. Go back to this fullback formation. Watson couldn't get away. We've seen Blair so comfortable running on these second and longs, third and longs versus I.B. Strafen, but he's just not comfortable right now. I don't know if his nerves are getting to him, but I would like to see him stick with that game plan he had last game. He was motioning guys around, making the defense really uncomfortable. He just made that drive so easy for Phenom to play defense. And he picked up the blitz well right there. He had the drag out route open, didn't throw it in the window, and eventually it just all fell apart. Sometimes with that escape artist under center, it's really easy to get frazzled and, frazzled and get outside the pocket when you don't really need to. Just hang tough in the pocket and then find your running lanes with your quarterback. Punt goes out of bounds at the 10-yard line, so first and 10. Back near his own end zone here for Phenom. He'll hand it off to Tyreek Hill. There's the speed, ah. and he gets tripped up at the 30-yard line. He was almost out of there. And every time we've seen him go to that fullback dive out of these near close formations where everybody's bunched together, it looks like Blair hasn't had any answer for it. I would continue to go back to it. It was the only man that could match that speed, Danzel Ward, with a second tackle of the ball game. And White comes in on the big hit there, forcing a second and seven. And then remember, Blair came into this tournament with Strafen on his mind. He had been thinking about Strafen for over a year, trying to get that revenge. That mission is done. He had no idea that he was going to run into the phenom. So playing with a little less intensity, it seems, is Blair. 11, 11, 11. Second down now. Luck, low throw, picked off the turf. That'll be a gain of five. Here's a big third and two. And we're probably going to see that fullback dive. Can Blair find the run defense for it? Because that's exactly what we're going to see here. I promise you there's no other call coming in that fullback dive to Tyreek Hill. That's the voice of Sirius Mo, two-time belt winner. Run commit middle. Try to stop it. That's what I was just going to ask you, Mo. It seems like maybe just run commit completely sell out because it's just obvious that it's coming. And he can't get the playoff here at the end of one. 7 nothing in favor of Phenom. He's at the ball with five minutes remaining before the half. And for Phenom, I do feel he is nervous, but as you can see, he's he's not as shaky. He's, he's just calmed down a little bit. And you know, that's because he's able to just run the ball, something that he wasn't doing a whole lot of in his last opponent versus his last opponent. And then Hall will take it to the 42. Four carries for 70 yards and a touchdown for Dante. And I like what Phenom said after his first game. He said, you know what? This is nothing to me. I've played in tons of pressure situations. This is where I want to be. And right now, he does look mighty comfortable up there. Luck, quick throw. And Troy P was right there on the coverage. And that was a phenomenal click on by Blair right there. A lot of people don't notice. He actually clicked on so fast and was able to make that user play. A little bit unlucky that the wide receiver dropped it, but that was a great user play. He did all he could, and it worked out for him. And here's a third down now at the 42-yard line. 421 to go in the half. Phenom up by a touchdown. Luck. Great defense. Try to get to the quarterback. To right, and he'll just throw it away. Here comes the fourth down. What are you doing? You're kind of playing with house money right now. I'd probably go for it because if you get it, it's so crucial. If you don't get it, you still got the opportunity to get the ball back before half because you are still on your own 42-yard line. You're kind of playing with house money here. The good news for Blair is his nickel normal pass defense looking like it's matching up well versus this bunch so far. Tyreek will take it to the 43, a nonchalant fourth down conversion. And plus territory now with four minutes to go. And that's the problem when you get stuck on that other safety. Those streaks up the middle are going to be open a lot versus those cover two defenses. Ball at the 43. He's got him, the post. And he comes back to the sideline. It's Marvin Harrison, and he gets there. Touchdown, Phenom. Look at Phenom. We saw him all animated early on, playing with a lot of emotion. Now he just looks focused and locked in at the task at hand. He's not messing around. So now it's a two-score game. And Blair certainly feeling the pressure. He'll dive out near the 30. They'll mark him down at the 29. Here it is again, Mo. 
Yeah, you could see right away he had that post. The question was, is the pressure going to get there? And it doesn't. Wide open, touchdown. First and 10. Can he get Barry Sanders going? Something really smart by Blair right there. He noticed that he had clicked onto that free safety, meaning that he's frozen a little bit. He's not gonna he's not gonna move with that fullback, and that's why that's, that works so well. He just had the extra numbers over on the right side. Gain of nine is gonna bring up a second and short. We see him waste that motion a lot with the fullback, trying to see where the defense is gonna go, how the defense is gonna adjust, and it he he realized it would be a waste of a motion motioning him out, and that's why we've seen the quick snap. Needs a few inches to move the chains. Remember, this is a critical drive for Blair. He has this run first offense, so the more he falls behind in this game, it's going to be extremely hard for him to get back into it with his style of play. And Barry falls forward. That should be enough, and it is. New set of downs at the 39, but that clock on the move, 220 to go in the half. to follow up with RG points. It's crucial for Blair to make this the last drive. Regardless if he gets three or seven, he cannot give Phenom the ball back. Switch, switch. So first and 10, both players with all three timeouts. And we might have the two minute warning here. He will get the play off, hands it off to Barry. Barry will stretch it out to the right side. He'll put on the Jets. We didn't see that stick work at all last game. That was phenomenal stick work, Red Blair right there, realizing who Phenom has on defense. Those guys are not going to be able to catch up. He's got Barry Sanders. Great, great stick work and, and recognition of who he's got on defense. Biggest play of the game thus far for Blair, trailing 14 to nothing. As we reach the two-minute warning, he'll motion out white. Back to Barry, he gets a block. Let's go, one more stop. And we got a one-score game. Touchdown, Blair. They don't got defense for it. That was huge right there by Blair. And like Mo said, good stick work in the run game. And we've seen him several times where Barry looks like he's blown up in the backfield, but he's just faster than all of those defenders. Beats him to the outside, and he's given Blair a chance to make plays we'll stop, when he baby, probably we'll shouldn't. 14-7 to 7 now. Boy, did Blair need that one. And now Phenom will go back to work. Let's see how he did it, Mo. And he's motioning out that fullback. And you'd see that safety just runs to the other side of the field. So it's just a numbers game when you're running the ball. You have, you have extra numbers, you're going to be able to run the ball successfully. If you don't got the numbers, it's not going to work. He had the numbers, wide open touchdown. He'll bunch it up to the left side, flip it one more time. 149 before the half. He's got all three timeouts in his pocket. Andrew Luck. Gets outside, throws it a little bit. The you barrier know. and holds it in you at the know. 40. You run every play, you don't deserve Can it. Can you believe that's it? Awful, so and that's nothing. the play of the half, Scott, because that's that was awful. supposed to be a turnover. Instead, he picks up 35 yards and he's on the brink of field goal range. First and 10 now at the 40. Did get out of bounds. Clock stopped. Luck again. And he'll slide down at the 34. Gain of six. This game just got a lot easier for Phenom because of that huge play. He's able to just use the clock and take his points now. He doesn't have to work real hard on offense. He's already in field goal range. Luck again. Phenom able to get outside and he'll slide one more time. Just outside the red zone at the 21. And if you're Blair, you know, your, your lab partner is none other than Noonan, who also made it to the final of a club, the Broncos club, but then fell short there. You're not trying to follow suit if you're Blair. He said this is the first year they fully committed themselves to competitive Madden, and they expect to make some noise. One of the lab partners is down, and now it's all up to Blair, but it's not looking good for him. Phenom from South Carolina, Blair from North Carolina. Trying to see who's going to represent Minnesota. And Dante, quick burst of energy to the 13-yard line. But if you're Blair, that's just way too easy. You know, he didn't get touched until there were seven guys. There was nobody in front of him until he got to that seven-yard mark. You got to you gotta come down. You got to make a play earlier than that. At what point do you use these timeouts? Clock coming a factor. And throws it Thank to you. the end zone, and it's a pick. And what it, a play by Troy Palomalu. It looked like that might have been Phenom's fault. It looked like right when he clicked on, he jabbed to the right just a little bit, and that's why the ball got picked off. That should have been a touchdown. 
Well, I was literally just about to ask Mo. Mo, there's no way that he passes the ball here, right? And then sure enough, before the words can come out of my mouth, quick hikes and throws a book, and now Blair is all the way back in ball game. And that's why you call that timeout, so you can, you can get your best play out there. You don't have to rush anything. He may have rushed that just a little bit. Oh, that could be a costly mistake, not taking your points before oh. half. And Barry gets bottled up. And here comes the timeout. It's going to be from Blair. 14 seconds to go. He's just hoping Barry breaks one. Very well could. 14 seconds to go for the end of the half. Blair was down 14 to nothing. Kill, kill, kill. Turn up. I know Phenom be thinking about that three points he could have had, Mo. I know a lot of people find this boring, but I love the patience that Blair's using on offense right now. Just getting getting sure that he has the numbers where he's going to run the ball. He's playing a huge mind game with his opponent. He should have a huge play here. There's no one over on the right side. Barry. A lot of pressure on Troy P, and he forces him out of bounds at the 31. That'll stop the clock. And his just run stick's just not there. If he cuts that up, there's no one there. Make somebody make a tackle. Just don't, don't just run out of bounds. There's only 10 seconds left in the half. And he got two timeouts. Not to mention you have one of the best running backs of all time with Jukebox. Go make a play. You're one-on-one -on -one with 10 seconds left in the half, and now you're stuck at your own 30-yard line. Switch Tyreek Hill to the right side of the formation. As Mo mentioned, 10 seconds to go. Here's He's the got the numbers. Half. He's got the numbers. He might call a timeout here. Yeah, he's going to run the play. Barry, jukebox is in the backfield. Nothing there, and there's a timeout. One more play remaining in the half. It's a big stop right there. You're phenom because it was just looking like every run, Blair was getting more and more yards running the ball, which is just giving him more and more confidence as this game goes. Three deep defense, and it'll stop him right at midfield, and that's where the first half will come to a close. 14-7. to seven. Phenom with a seven-point lead. We've had some talking. We've had some good football. But more importantly, we got them wired up here at the club. Oh! Thank you! You run every play, you don't deserve any fluke ever in your life, so I don't want to hear nothing, bro. You can see that's what they're playing for right there. Customized, designed football by the Minnesota Vikings. You're going to represent Minnesota in the round of 32. Put 6,500 in your back pocket with a chance to really multiply that up. The winner of the whole thing gets 100 grand. Here we go, gentlemen, second half, 14 to seven. Phenom will be kicking away to, to Blair with an opportunity to tie this game up. And Blair may have the best run scheme I've seen this year. I'm not joking. It may, be, it may just be better than mine at the Classic. I want to go ahead and throw it out there, but the problem is his stick work just isn't matching it. You know, he's having these huge lanes, but he's just not getting there. Certainly seems like the Madden acumen is there. Yeah. But the years of skill, a little bit lacking to yeah. go along with it. That's serious praise when serious Mo <laughs> is telling you you got the best run scheme. And I agree with Mo so far. He's calling, he's he's picking the right run plays. He's had a lot of success. I can't really comment on the stick work because it's a lot better than mine. He trails by a touchdown though, and he's hitting the backfield. Barry with 11 carries for 120, but he loses a yard there. He's got negative one passing yards. And by the way, that was Denzel Ward coming in on the tackle. Back to Barry. And once again, this time it's Lawrence Taylor. And that's the one player, that's the one player you got to get by on that front seven. Everybody else has no chance at catching Barry. That's the one player you got to get by, and if you're not able to get by him, you're going to have a long day. Watson will swing to the outside, and how about those three plays on defense? That was a big defensive stand right there from Phenom. Forces a three and out on Blair, shuts down the run, and now gets the ball back in the hands of his high-powered offense. 
What a way to open up the second half if you feed on. And made a mistake punting into Tyreek Hill. But able to contain him out at the 45, but those are free yards. Yeah, and on those punts, you're able to sub in your better players. So when these guys punt the ball on bounds, then I see their 10 caps chasing Tyreek Hill around, and it makes me go crazy. And remember, when you're angling that punt, you can feel the controller vibrating. That's how those guys are able to put it out of bounds. We've seen several punts not find their target as he pushes his way to the 50-yard line for Dante Hall. 83 yards now. That was a really good pro tip as well from Sirius Mo and Scott. The vibration on the punt to let you know when it's going to go out of bounds. And Mo using those formation subs at the play call screen to make sure you get your best players at those gunner positions. Two really good tips from you guys right there. So a second and four at the 50-yard line. Press coverage. See what Andrew Luck has in his bag of tricks here. Throws across his body, but it's Marvin Harrison right there to haul it into the 31. And I was just about to critique him to go in, for going to this gun bunch formation when he's been running the ball so successfully. It almost didn't make any sense. That first drive he came out, just ran it right down his throat. And then, you know, it, it, to me, that, that's kind of a nervous tick right there where you just go to the gun bunch after you just picked up six yards running the ball. you got a one possession lead already, you know, but it worked out for him. Just a great read right there. He's playing as good as he can play on offense. The key right now is I, he needs to keep this ball on the ground and make sure he gets some points. Last time he was in this situation, he threw that red zone turnover when it was completely unnecessary. Hopefully, Phenom learned from his mistake. Oh, a big hit by Troy Palomalo at the 30-yard line. Able to get a yard. Remember, it should be 17-7. to And Phenom had the stretch left wide open. There was nobody over there, you know. That just comes from not running the ball very much. You know, you don't know where the lanes are at. You know, Blair's not having those issues, but he's just not able to get the run game going. This is truly passing versus running. Phenom likes to do it through the air. Blair likes to keep it on the ground. Second down. Watch the wheel. And throw it in. And Marvin couldn't hold it in as Troy Palomalu met him in the air. That's that no, just like Mo was about to say, and like he said earlier, that was crazy stick work right there from Blair. If he doesn't click on the Troy Palomalu and make that hit, that's for sure a completed pass for a big game. Andrew Luck, the former Civil War captain, will get into the shotgun here on third and nine. Needs to get to the 21 to continue the drive. Cannot take a sack here. Luck. Good defense. Gets outside, and he will throw it away. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a 47-yard field goal and coming. And not only on that on that second down, that click on, he didn't just click on and hold Y and go for the interception. He clicked on, he ran down, collided with the wide receiver instead of holding Y or else. If he would have held Y, he probably would have went for He probably would have animated behind him, and he would have just caught it right in front of him. The kick is up, and it's good, and that's going to make it a 10-point ball game. Two scores with... 132 to go in the third, and Blair's going to get it back. Scott Cole, Sirius Mo, RG, along with you. Here for the final club championship of all the 32 teams, we end with Minnesota. And 10 days from now, the real fun begins. 32 players representing all 32 NFL teams will battle it out for over 700 grand. I hope Blair doesn't get impatient and start slinging the ball around. There's no need to. You've played phenomenal. You've played phenomenal. Pretty good offense running the ball. Don't don't get in this pass happy offense where you're not comfortable. First down at the 26. Sean Watson. Oh, that's a tight window. Come on, man. Yeah, Pruitt's not going to be getting open too often versus Marlon Humphrey. He's just not. Just a pretty good matchup for Phenom. You know, Blair lucky that that's not a turnover. That's a risky throw for half a yard. Second and ten. Goes back to the bread and butter. There's Barry Sanders. Makes a guy miss but can't get away from another. They're going to give him three yards on that. Here comes a third and seven. Something I've already noticed is Blair's completely lost that patience he had on offense. He's rushing it. As you've seen, he just came out and snapped the stretch. It just He didn't have the numbers there. That's why that run didn't work. Deshaun. And oh. that will be hauled in by Hill out at the 43-yard line. That'll continue the drive. That was a big time read right there from Blair when he absolutely needed to have it. He got it. 
keeps the drive going right there with the big third down play. Hands it out to Barry. Goes nowhere as White comes in on the hit. And if you are going to go to this quick snap run game, I'd be running it away from Lawrence Taylor. First tackle for White. 14 carries now for Barry Sanders. A reminder, we have all 32 of the club championship finals out on the Madden Competitive Gaming YouTube. That'll give you something to do over the next 10 days. Second and 11. Watson goes up under center. DW4 will roll out to the left side and it'll slide down at the 49. Just shy of midfield, so here comes another third down. You like to see that. You spent 55 cap on that escape artist ability. You got to use it a little bit. That's one of the first times we've seen Blair actually use it for a positive game. Oh. And that's just a bad throw. Bullet pass, very inaccurate. And he's quite perplexed at the result of that play. It's a big fourth down. What do you like here, Mo? Is it possible? You could go to the run here, I feel like. I think you got to air it off. You're going to pass on third. You got to pass on fourth. I would have liked to see a run call, though, on that third and four. 427 to go. Time's starting to run out. And that's a good point by Mo. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, you got to be running it there with Barry on third. Here's Watson again. Got options. Oh, he, he had Barry wide open. And he's going to throw it to the end it's zone. Super it's knocked man. away. It's super incredible. Wilson on the coverage. Bar Barry it's Sanders. A turnover on downs. Ooh. Barry Sanders was wide open. I don't know how he didn't see him. It looked like he might have accidentally pressed left trigger and turned Deshaun Watson into a runner instead of a passer and kind of panicked and didn't throw it to him and then threw it way too late. That was a touchdown that Barry Sanders would have been down by three points with four minutes to go in the game. Instead, the ball goes back to Phenom. And I'm just so impressed by Phenom's stick work, though, on that last play. The angle route looked like it was getting wide open over the middle of the field. Phenom went and took that away. And then when Blair threw it late to Barry Sanders, Phenom clicks on, smartly swats the ball down instead of picks it. That was very well played defense from Phenom. Hands it off to Tyreek Hill. We'll go back to that fourth down. Mo and with Blair being a runner, certainly didn't look comfortable passing the football, and it showed on that play. Yeah, he didn't. And the problem is he's he's passing out of a two tight end formation, two running back, two tight end. It's it's just tough to make a living in that formation passing the ball to begin with. But you get somebody wide open, you can't miss him. So here's a third and eight from the 47. Clock on the move, 3:12 to go in the game. Enam trying to win a club for the first time ever. And that's Marvin Harrison. Nobody around him at the 20-yard line, and he catches it in bounds. This, oh, man, finish. This 19-year-old Kevin Williams, a.k.a. Phenom, is just tough, and he's got good stick work on offense and on defense. I love seeing guys click on, do that little baby swerve, get manual. This young man is tough. As I mentioned before, both these guys from the Carolinas trying to represent oh! the Vikings. A little oh, stop and go, a little swag oh, for Phenom. And look at him swag out right there as he should. He got so icky with the human joystick. I mean, he was literally the human joystick himself right there. Some stop and go, get to the outside, make it a three possession ball game. And that might have been the $6,500 play that went speed on the Vikings Club Championship. That was nasty. I'm not going to lie. Everybody does look goofy when they're up there dancing. <laughs> but he earned that one. That he was nasty. Look at the Whoop. stop and go. Oh, my goodness. That was so crispy. He was going to stop and go the user, stop and go the computer. It didn't matter. And his moves are good. I mean, he looks natural up there when he busts the move. Barry now. And he'll step out of bounds at the 36. That'll stop the clock, 2.17 to go. But Blair down 24 to 7. Gave up 14 unanswered. He's able to climb back within a score, but feet up has worked his way up again. This is a bomb to Tyreek. One hand grab, and Marlon Humphrey will catch him. Touchdown, Blair. And if you're Blair, you got to go for the onside here. You're down by 10 with only two minutes left. Maybe in past Maddens, you would you would just kick it deep. But in this Madden, where the clock is run so fast, you just don't have enough time for two possessions. you got to make it where it's a one-score game. He will kick it deep. 
I don't like it. It's almost as if you're conceding defeat. And Smith will take it out to the 25-yard line. Cool fact about my guy Blair is he's got his pops Tony watching back home, and his dad is actually a mutt player himself. Gets on the sticks every now and then. Dante can't get away. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Phenom just two minutes away from being crowned the Madden Club champion for the Minnesota Vikings. I would really like to see Phenom run the ball twice here. I know it's gonna, you might get to a third and eight, but it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that clock. You're up by two possessions, get the game over with. No reason to try to convert on third down if you have to. Here's Tyreek Hill navigating his way to the 31, and here comes the first timeout in for Blair. Clock stop, 157 to go, third and three. Everybody know my name. Run commit down, it's your only chance. Hands it to Tyree Kill, and that's gonna be enough for the first down. Yeah, and that's pretty much gonna be the ball game right there. The speed of Tyreek and Dante, especially in this formation, Mo, they're gonna have two yards before you can even blink. Yeah, he went on that conservative conservative ball carry, so he's not going to be fumbling the ball very often. Really smart tactic by him just to kind of bleed out that clock, get it over with. And shout out to, to Phenom. I mean, he came into this tournament prepared, and he was confident. You saw him in his interview with Evan. He was saying, I want Strafen. I didn't think the club was that good. And, uh, you know, some people might say that as, you know, being cocky or whatever. To me, it came off as confident. And he came Whoa, off as man. a young man that knew what he wanted, knew what he was going to accomplish, and now he gets it done. And there it is. Sportsmanship will dab it up. 24 to 14, Phenom is your Minnesota Vikings club champion with a 10-point win. And really, energy from start to finish for Phenom. And you talked about that confidence, certainly wasn't arrogance, and here's the highlights in the final. And remember, he got up to this early lead, and Phenom just couldn't catch up. Here's Dante Hall to the crib. Yeah, no one there to catch him. Really no one there to tackle him at all. There was nobody in the middle of the field, just an easy touchdown. And here's Andrew Luck coming back to Marvin Harrison, and he would just beat him, RG. Yeah, and you know what? How about Phenom with a good balanced attack? We thought he was going to be a passer. He showed us he could run and pass the ball today. And that was the one that we thought, man, Barry Sanders was wide open for a touchdown. He panicked. It's hard to throw the ball 80, 80 yards on a, on a line. You know, you can throw it 50 on a line, but 80, you're asking for a lot. Look at the swag. There's the swag, and that means usually when you dance, you lose. That's dancing and winning. Phenom 24 to 14. 10-point win after beating Strafing by seven, and it's about time somebody from South Carolina wins an important game of Madden. He's hanging out with Evan. Oh, man, South Carolina in the house. Obviously, you got the big win. Congratulations on winning the finals, representing the Vikings. Uh, in your own words, what does this feel? What does this mean to you? It means a lot because I've been grinding, man, years and years, not getting to any live events, you know what I'm saying, just struggling, struggling. But now it finally came through, and everything's coming to fruition, man. This is the Madden Club, it's not the Madden Challenge, but that's a Madden Challenge you mentioned right there, just watching people succeed in places that you wanted to be one day. How did you get through that? I mean, what, what kind of kept you going during those times? Man, just my, my friends and stuff, man. I, there was a lot of times when I was like, I'm not built for this. Like, it's just it's too hard, but, you know, you just keep grinding. People around you help you out, and everything just comes together. There was a little something different about that game. You kind of started to feel it. Things were happening. Blair also had his own journey. He took down Ivy Strafen. He'd been looking to do that. But you seem to kind of have an understanding of what you needed to do to win that final. Yeah, I mean, I watched this game before, and I knew he was just going to be running. So I felt like my run defense was pretty good. I mean, I didn't prepare my defense for a runner. I prepared it for Strafen, but he lost. So I had to really make do with what I had. Yeah, well, let's, look, let's take a look at your last touchdown here. Break it down for us on the wall. 